Good morning, good afternoon and good evening everyone to the channel IT Simplified. Hope you're finding these videos useful and subscribing to channel. In today's session, I'm here to talk about global load balancing option within Azure, how you can utilize this and we're going to test it out. So as you know that uh, networking is very big component of any Azure deployment. And when you come to load balancing, there are a couple of options. You might have heard about application gateway, front door, traffic manager or load balancer. All these are nothing but different options that uh, Azure provides you. And based on what problem you're trying to solve, you use one load balancing option or the other. But today's session, we're going to talk about standard load balancer, which has uh, cross region capabilities. So as you can see on the diagram, what I've done is that I'll be using two regions, the Canadian and the Europe. One, I've already deployed resources and I have deployed regional standard load balancer. And what we're going to test it out is deploy global load balancer in one of the home region and see how that's going to work out. Now, one thing I want to point out that uh, this load balancer works at the layer four of the OSI model. So it means that it works at the transport layer. So the thing it is concerned about is the source and the destination IP and the post is going to work with. Whereas uh, application gateway or maybe front door, it works at layer seven, which is the application layer and traffic manager, which works at the DNS level. Now, because it works at the layer four, the failover is basically much more faster as compared to maybe a DNS based uh, load balancer. And another thing which is, or capability I would say, which is built in is that uh, it will, based on the traffic it is coming or trying to uh, get to, it will route the traffic to the nearest region. So I'm based out of Canada and uh, Technically, I should be hitting my Canadian region, not the European region. And the only time it will go and hit the European region, if I'm accessing anything from Canada, in case my Canadian region goes down actually, and we're going to test it out. So with this in place, let me flip over to my Azure portal and I'm going to search for load balancer. And these are the two which is already there. These are all regional load balancer I've already provisioned for this testing purpose. So let's go and click create new we're going to create a new resource group give it a name and uh, one thing I forgot to add is that when it comes to these global load balancer it has to be deployed in one of the home region and I think uh, Azure has six or seven region where you're going to deploy this. So I'm going to use East US 2. And sometimes there is a question which come across is that what happens in case the home region goes down in which your global load balancer is that. Now the way it is designed is, even if your region goes down, your customer will be still be able to access these resources. The only thing you won't be able to do is tweak the properties of this load balancer, but uh, you will be still be able, so your business will be still running. So with that in place, let me go and pick East US 2. That is where I'm going to deploy my global load balancer. The type is public, even though you can deploy a load balancer for both internal and public resources. For this functionality, it has to be public based, at least right now in the previous state. And the SQ has to be standard. The basic is not going to work. And the tier, we're going to use global. And uh, we need to provide a public IP and let's review and create. Deployment was successful. Let's go to resources. And the first thing I'm going to do is under settings, go to the backend pool. And uh, we're going to add our regional load balancer. So first I'm going to add the Canadian one, the front end IP, and then the European. And let's click on add. And the last thing I'm going to do is to create a load balancer rule. Give it a name. It will work with both IPv4 and IPv6. In our case, I'm using IP version 4 and pick the front end IP. The protocol is going to be TCP and uh, the port is going to listen as port 80. 
and let's also provide the backend pool and let's click on add all right so with both backend pool and world basing rule uh, completed successfully i'm going to the overview button and let's grab the public ip of my cross region load balancer and just remember i'm in canada so i should be hitting my canadian resources let's go hit enter and here we go as you can see i'm hitting my canadian region so that's test number one so that's great now what i'm going to do is i'm going to deliberately create a dr kind of scenario so let's go and uh, switch off my canadian machine and let's see then i should be hitting then first of all i should see the error that i'm not able to reach uh, my canadian resources and then it should fail over my traffic to the european region here we go so as you can see that uh, our canadian resource has been stopped and now if we go and try to hit i should be now flipped over to the european region so let's finger crossed and here we go i am hitting now the european region so with this you can see we have successfully tested our global load balancer which is in preview right now and if you want to do this you can follow the same steps that we did it hopefully if you found this video useful thanks for watching have a good day